Hello folks, this is Mike Cayley 7 coming to you from Cary, North Carolina. Pulled over at this Ford dealership to turn on my stuff, put on my camera. This morning I rode out to uh, Team Power Sports Kawasaki on Glenwood Avenue in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, had my 600 mile service done. Said everything checks out. So I'm a happy camper. I had uh, this this young Indian kid uh, pull up next to me at the light. Loves this bike. Was just giddy to see it. He even knew it was the SE. Like that's the SE, right? I'm like yeah, it is. Oh man, he had such a grin. That makes you feel good. I'm doing like I normally do and just kind of go where uh, my feeling takes me and it has not done me wrong today. I have managed to not get lost once. So that was awesome. And now I found myself exactly where I wanted to be, so... Hooray! I have a couple of moto topics, but I don't know if I can remember what they are. I put them in my phone to remind me, but I forgot to check my phone before I turned this all on, so. Oh well. So uh, one topic I had in mind was the, the weight difference between the Kawasaki ZH2SE and the 2019 Goldwing Tour DCT. And that difference is, uh, let me see now, 834 pounds wet, I think it's wet, for the Goldwing and 531 pounds. So it's what, 300 pound difference? So not insignificant at all. At all, at all. And, uh, I notice it. I really do notice it. I can do U-turns better on this bike. I can do slow speed maneuvers better on this bike. Obviously I can corner better. This bike is uh, designed for that kind of thing, right? More sporty kind of ride. Not track ride, but sporty. Upright riding position is not so bad. It's a little bit leaned over, but not too bad at all. And if you're going, you know, 70, you're not leaned over. <laughs> In fact, uh, it just holds you right upright. You're perfectly upright. Kind of like, like this, you know? Anyway. So now that I'm done with my break-in period, I can have a little bit more fun without having to worry. I did get one guy commented on several of my videos about how, you know, I'm an old person and I don't know what I'm talking about. And he, he breaks in his bikes aggressively every time and all of his bikes still run fine. Well, you know what? You do you. You do you. Don't tell me how to ride my bike. I won't tell you how to ride yours. Anyway, that guy's blocked, so. And he had content. Some of the worst uh, trolls I've had, some of the most rude people have been uh, people with content on their page. So uh, this, this consideration for weight it's something that I never really factored in before. I mean, I had a soft tail standard that was about 600 pounds, right? 500 and something, 600 pounds. Then a Road King, that was, you know, six, 700 pounds. And then the, the two Ultras, 
900 and something pounds. So I've always had heavy bikes. I've never really had a lightweight bike before. Never rode a Sportster, although I did get on Patrick's and move it around the driveway a little bit, but... And that thing felt super light, my god. And teeny weeny too. But um, this bike has really been an eye opener for me. The ability to uh, maneuver this bike around is so much easier. I didn't realize how, what I was missing. I mean, the, the Goldwing isn't hard at all by any stretch. But you don't know how easy it can be until you have a bike that's this light and this nimble. And I'm not even talking about the acceleration characteristics of the, you know, the 200 horsepower and 101 foot-pounds of torque of this bike on a 531 pound frame or bike, whatever. The, the power to weight ratio on this thing is amazing, right? So you twist the throttle on this and whew, but that's not my, my main thing that I'm noticing about the weight of this. It's just the ease of maneuvering this bike. So in talking to uh, GB winging it, Gil. Hi, Gil. I, um, I'm, I'm always learning stuff from people. I love learning stuff. It's one of my favorite things to do is learn. As long as I'm interested in it. You know, nobody wants to learn something I have no interest in. And Gil says... Um, you know, he's been through where I've been before, and so I'm, I'm listening to the wisdom that he has, because he's already been down this path. And he uh, had a, an ADV bike for a while, a good long while. And uh, here's what I was thinking, and here's how, how what Gil said uh, helps. Look at me stopping at red lights like a good old doobie. So here I was thinking, right, you know, this bike is great. Love this bike super fast and all that but maybe in a couple of years I might be feeling like getting something else you know how I am every two years something's going to change or maybe get an additional bike what would I get because uh, you know the utility of, of uh, having saddlebags is really awesome I really have to plan when I'm on this thing. I can't really bring anything. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. I mean, I definitely don't mind the way things are here. Oh, food truck. Cousins Maine Lobster. Maine Lobster? If they don't have a Boston accent, I'm going to sh just shut them down. Just close. You're not allowed to keep yourself open. <laughs> You can't sell lobster down here. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm remembers. And uh, I talked to another one. I, I'm sorry, uh, the person who commented this. I, I cannot remember your name. Sorry, sorry. But uh, the comment was great. It was an awesome comment about why he has an ADV. And uh, it really struck home for me. So if you want to have a bike that is very versatile, you can treat it like a touring bike you can treat it more like a sport bike it can go off-road doesn't have to then an ADV bike is is a really good option it's light more lightweight than a big cruiser and I thought you know what that that might be like the best of all possible worlds at some point once I get uh, you know this paid for or out of my system you know, the, the, the lovely speed thing which I may never, or maybe turn this into a, a track day bike. You know, you can move the highway pegs, or highway pegs, listen to me. You can move the rider pegs, uh, the rear sets. There's all kinds of stuff you can do to make this more like a track bike, but it's not ever going to be a real track bike, the seating position, but whatever. Maybe get an ADV bike at some point, and then not feel like an idiot, you know, because I'm not riding it off-road every day. Or ever. Seldom ever do I see the opportunity to ride off of pavement where I live. Maybe it'll be like that uh, Bader Meinhof effect where if I start looking into it, I'll start seeing opportunities everywhere.
and it's kind of a philosophical thing. If you bend your energies towards something, generally, it kind of bends toward you like the like attraction kind of thing. At least that's what I've noticed in the past. So then Gil comes into it and he says, well, you know, I drank that Kool-Aid real hard. Very strong Kool-Aid. And I had the, the RS, uh, I guess it's a 1200, 1250. I don't even know. Sorry, too many letters and numbers for me to remember all this stuff. But it was a BMW, and it was probably the kind that uh, you and, and Charlie had in the long way round and up and down and all around your butt. Uh, too big, too heavy. As he's, as he's getting older, his priorities have changed. And he enjoyed it while he had it, loved it. But uh, I think now he's, I think, 57, if, if, you, if uh, you don't fault me for getting your age wrong there, Gil. But uh, he's getting a little bit older and thinking, you know what, I'd like something lighter and easier. For a while I was totally into the comfort thing, and I still am, but comfort part of that is a lighter bike, I guess you could say. Let's go this away. This way it would appear to be more fun. Yes, it would appear. And here I am past break in, and look at me, I'm not going totally nuts. Because this isn't the place to go nuts. You don't go nuts in a neighborhood. Which is not right. So, I hope I can stick to that. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to die prematurely. So when Gil said that, you know, the lightweight thing as you're getting older is, is a, a definite thing to consider. Uh, makes me wonder, maybe an ADV bike is not something I want to add to the stable or replace something with. I'm playing it by ear as I do all things in my life. I try to, you know, listen and mull things over and when the, when the time comes, I'll make the choice that's right for me. At least I hope I will. I have not made a bad choice yet. I've loved every bike I've ever owned. And when it was time to move on, I moved on. One of the, the things I used to delude myself in purchasing this bike is, this is a pretty rare bike, first off. At least right now it is. There's not a whole bunch of these out in the road. And the SE model is even more rare. So I thought, oh, it's a collector's item. <laughs> Uh, keep telling yourself that, Mikey. It might come true. I did that with uh, the Harleys I had, too. You know, when I got my Road King Classic, I thought, this, this is a collector's item. This, this, this is going to gain value. It's going to be so, so valuable someday. Yeah, in a hundred years, when there's nothing else like it on the road, and it's super-duper antique, garage find type thing maybe in the year 2105 a 2005 Road King Classic will be like oh my god that's what they rode back then we have hover bikes now another thing about the lightweight nature of this bike is if I'm in a situation on the, in the, on the road here where I feel like I can make a move like I was behind this big slow heavy pickup truck they had a trailer, and uh, we made a left turn together, and I saw ahead of me that there was nobody, even though it was a double yellow line, but this guy was going really slow, and he had a, a very iffy looking trailer behind him with a bunch of stuff in it, so I just kind of gunned him and went around him on the left. There was no way he could turn, because there was no place to turn there, it was a field, so I, I knew all, all things being considered, that was not the worst of options to take, and so I took it. Some people might say that's a terrible thing I did. I'll say, how dare you? You passed so illegally. Yes, I did. I did. I would never have done that on my Goldwing. But this bike, I know, can, can make that kind of maneuver and be gone before anybody even could get angry. Not, not that this guy is going to chase me down with a big old pickup truck with a trailer on the back full of junk. That's another thing I consider, you know, if I'm going to pass anybody in any any kind of iffy way, shape, or form, 
I think to myself, is this person going to get all road ragey and try to chase me down? If there's any question at all, uh, no, I don't do it. You know, there's there's this uh, this old joke about an old bull and a young bull are standing on a hill, and the young bull says to the old bull, "Hey, old bull, let's run down that hill and shag us some of them cows." And then the old bull looks at him and says, "Let's walk down this hill and shag all of them cows." Such is the same with enjoying something and learning something like this. I want to take my time. I want to savor it. I don't have to become uh, the master of this bike anytime soon, and I don't really worry about that. I just want to learn it. It's awful fun, that's for sure. And I know some of you Goldwing guys are like, Oh God, not another video on the Kawasaki. Sorry. If I start getting too many complaints, maybe I'll just start moving over, moving these videos over to my, my other channel. My Killer 7's other channel. Very creative name, right? That's what I did with the guns. I moved the gun stuff over there. Every winter I get into guns again. So that's my take on it, folks. Uh, the lighter bike might be something I gravitate toward as I get older. Easier to maneuver. Uh, I think Paul Fosbury has it right. I mean, he, he's 80 something, 84, 85, and he's still going. And he's got a little teeny bike, which is perfect for him. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll downsize as I age. And I started out on, I, I think it was like a Rebel 250 or something. I'll probably end up on a Rebel 250. <laughs> if I don't even know if they make a Rebel 250. Might have been a Yamaha. I don't know what it was. But it was a little teeny bike for the MSF course that I used. So maybe that'll be the last bike I ride is one of those little MSF course bikes. All right, folks, you guys take care of yourselves. Be safe. And I will be talking to you later.